Shrek Forever After in 3D. I guess I'll start this one by saying I haven't watched the third one. I love the first one, and the second one was quite good as well. When it came to the third one, I wasn't that enthusiastic about the trailers, and everybody pretty much told me it was crap. And I don't like crap. I really don't. When I first heard about this, I wasn't really intending to watch it. Recently, people have been telling me that it's worth watching, if they don't exactly sound ecstatic about it. So I went ahead and gave it a chance. And I'm quite glad that I did. One thing I want to get out of the way, something that bothered me was that this was directed by the same man who did the first Deuce Bigelow and Surviving Christmas. I haven't watched Surviving Christmas, but I hear it's really bad. For whatever it's worth, the novel's not too bad. Being that it's like the one time John Grisham sits down to write a novel and it doesn't come out being about the legal system, it can make you feel like you're in an alternate universe, very apropos of this movie. But I want to calm down anyone else who may be dissuaded by that. You see, it really doesn't feel like he's the one who did it. I'd say the film is less dirty than the second one was. And yes, it's perfectly family-oriented, without being irritating to those who aren't seven anymore. The 3D is great. I definitely recommend that if you go see it, watch it in 3D. It's not particularly gimmicky. You know, they're not constantly throwing stuff at your face. It is an overall pleasant viewing experience. and really adds something to a lot of the scenes. There are sequences of flight, which is a pretty obvious way to exploit the 3D that makes us feel that much more part of what we're watching. But it also just helps as far as the atmosphere and the tone go. I tend to not watch animated films, so I'm not that good of a judge of it, but I would say the animation is very... Things feel like they have weight to them, consistency. It feels like the real world. You may already know the plot, it's your average, it's a wonderful life concept. Not 100%, I mean, this idea has been reused in a ton of shows. And in those cases, it tends to be that one of the characters, like in the movie, wishes they never existed. It isn't quite that in this, but the result is the same. The plot plays out in the alternate land of Far Far Away, where Shrek never existed, and nobody knows him, so he has to convince his friends that he's some pretty good things come out of this, although they could have used it more. On the whole, it is arguably predictable, but there are surprises along the way, and it's never a boring movie. When this goes for being dramatic or exciting, it's quite effective, and when it means to be, it's sweet, not sappy. It all works. The story engaged me from start to finish. The comedy works two times out of three, and there aren't a lot of really embarrassingly bad jokes. I mean, I watched Night and Day not very many days ago, and in that one, most of the attempts at humor were just bad. I was really happy to be reminded that Diaz can be very funny. The material is about what you'd expect from the series, a mix of cleverness, wordplay, verbal comedy, silliness, and the occasional gross-out gag, as well as those anachronism gags that have popped up in a lot of these animated movies since, I guess, Aladdin, 1994. We're introduced to a handful of new characters, one or two of whom are actually memorable, and a couple of the old ones are pushed into the background. I would say that the ones pushed into the background are ones that they got a lot of mileage out of in the first two and ones that were fairly minor before remain minor. You know, some of them are just such one-note jokes that you really have to be careful not to give them too much exposure. You know, the fact that one joke from this one character is good doesn't mean that ten will be ten times as good. There are some good designs, and the new fairy tale characters and the like that they bring in are pretty good, pretty well handled. The cast returns and do well yet again. The new additions are quite good as well. This was the first time I found Craig Robinson funny. Then again, this is the first actual thing I watch him in, other than interviews and trailers, where I find him quite painful. 
I do want to say it is criminal to give Jane Lynch, and to a lesser extent Kathy Griffin, that few lines. Lynch could easily have gotten a role the size of Banderas. Everything I've seen her in, she's been hilarious. And here, I really didn't even know that was her until I saw the credits. That's how little I noticed what she played. The film has a good pace, nice energy. It doesn't move so fast that we lose track. And it never moves so slowly that we get bored or anything. Honestly, overall, I'd say, think the first two, only arguably it has less to say and you can tell that it's the fourth movie in a series. This is a really good way to close off the series. I don't think there's really anywhere interesting left to go. Also, I just gotta say, if they write in another Faustian deal relating to Fiona's fate in or out of the keep, I'm just gonna have to demand that they go ahead and declare a creative bank. That's it for my spoiler-free review. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you next time.